Hello, welcome back to Witchwood. My name is Usser. Oh, I need to go this way. We have got our grinding done. We should be, I'm a, I'm hopeful that this is like the last step for each one. So I need to prepare the cooking effigy. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was in the market. The porcine effigy. We're gonna go cook it. We'll see what happens. Okay, uh, let's do this. Porcine effigy. Set the false creature amongst the ashes of the cooking pit. It wriggles and squeals with impotent hunger. Now to fatten up this little piggy, I'll start with the smallest pig sister, but I'll need to collect something special to bind her spirit. Oh, I knew I had stuff that I needed to get. I was hopeful that would we'd be able to do this, so... A small pig switch. Is the small pig at the pig farm? So I gotta steal her switch. Small pig. That's tall pig. There she is. You can hear the runny swine squealing even before you see her. Holding her crop high, she busies herself admonishing a cluster of poor workers. Try to feed your useless rumps to the meat grinder, you filthy mongrels. Do we pay you to work or to sleep? They recoil from their taskmaster's lashes. You don't pay us at all. Say there, you seem to have gotten an awful lot of use from that grotty old switch. Would you say, what would you say to a trade? What? A trade? I've had this whipper ever since I was a wee suckling. No way, no how. Am I giving up my precious little flog? The Lashmaster 2000. Oh god. Like, I get it, we need to do this to move forward, but why are we doing this? So, I need rat's tails. Okay, I might need to get some snap traps, but I can get it in the village or the graveyard. I just need to find those rats' nests. That, that won't be too bad. I'm gonna see if I can get it quick. If not, we'll move on and do something else, and then more grinding. That was one thing I needed. What else did I need? Uh, not another pumpkin jack bone. At least I have some stuff now, so that will get me one pumpkin jack bone. I always have such a hard time with these pumpkin jacks because you only get one bone per kill, and you have to have a sewing kit, which means you have to have killed off mosquitoes, and that, that like, leads up to this long list of things you need just to get one pumpkin jack bone. So I haven't really, like, gone farming. The only time I get one is when I need one. Now, speaking of which, we've got our Lashmaster 2000. I mean, I'm going to get rid of the pig, but I feel kind of bad that I made her a new whip. Okay, here's your Lashmaster 2000. Is that a Lashmaster 2000? With extra stinging barbs and a rawhide non-slip grip? The one and only, I thought you were doing such an excellent job keeping these poor exploited souls under your hoof that you deserve the reward. She snatches the whip out of your hands with glee, tossing her old straw lash in the mud without a second glance. Not even saying thank you, she scampers off to test out her newly acquired motivational tool on unsuspecting farm workers. Well... Oh, that's, that's kind of evil because they're going to get whipped for a while by a much better whip. Until I kill them. <laughs> oh well. You don't become a witch in the swamp by being good all the time. Alright. Small pig switch. Feed the ratty straw whip into the mouth of the porcine effigy. Despite the thing not having any teeth, you distinctly hear the sound of crunching as it chews up its first meal. Effigy shudders and swells in size, becoming a healthy sized piglet made of straw. One down, two to go. For this feast to go off without a hitch, I'll need to gather something important from that swinish middle sister. 
I gotta get the tall pig's club now. Which means I'll have to craft something for it. That's all right. We're, we're so close. We just have two more things to do, and then we will have the pig done. Hey, you. You're the one who gave my little sister that souped-up whipper, ain't you? Well, I'd do twice as much work as that stinking twerp. This old beaten stick has served me well these long years, but if she gets an upgrade, then why shouldn't I? The Magnum Browbeater. <laughs> okay, hold on. So in order to do that, I need a big stick, a wicked gemstone, which I can't make, and a bunch of barnacles. In order to do the big stick, I just need some bones and some nails. Okay, so what's the wicked gem? I need dog hair, which means I need a spurific morsel. Okay, can do that now. So I need barnacles, nails, which I can get from the blacksmith, and dog hair. And there we go. Upgraded stick. Then I'll have to do something for the butcher, which will probably require that alchemical metal. And I know I don't have the stuff needed to make that yet. For right now, so we may have to go on to a different one. Here you go, my good man. Or good woman, I should say. The Magnum Browbeater. Sal takes a few test swings with her new cudgel, making you duck for safety. Aha, now that's more like it's solid build, perfect balance. You won't be needing that cracked old stick anymore. I'll just take it off your hands. Uh, sure, whatever. It's as good as firewood now. She ignores you and goes looking for pine cones or small animals to take a swing at. I have a feeling we're going to beat the game in this episode, so... I may have to do some, some grind work, but I think we're about done. Chop up the well-weathered cudgel into bite-sized pieces and offer them to the small effigy. It wastes no time gobbling up the bits of wood and crunching them into splinters. Satisfied with its second meal of sticks, it's the simulated pig rumbles and once again grows in size. This ham is almost ready for dinner, it just needs one more helping of soul food. Something special from the brutish butcher will be the last ingredient I need. Big Pig's Whetstone. Hello! See the enormous swine hacking apart a haunch of meat with her cleaver. It's dull and chip blade has clearly seen better days. She sneezes heavily before wiping a glob of snot with the back of her hand. Ugh. You again, what do you want now? As your dutiful employee, I've been taking it upon myself to improve your meat business. The whetstone of yours looks like it's not doing a great job of keeping your tools sharp. He raises an eyebrow at the worn slab of grindstone sitting on the countertop. Suppose it might be time to replace the old girl. Just think of how much more brutal you could be with a brand new sharpener. The Magisharp XL. It's even got a bow on there. A lucky strop. So... We have all but one recipe open now. Okay, what does that take? Rabbit's foot. I've yet to kill rabbits. Goblin snot. A gnome hat. So in order to get the gnomes, I'm going to need the puzzle box, which means I need changeling roots and a seashell. Okay, that's not too bad. We'll go down and... I'll work on that a little bit later. Um, I didn't look at the magia sharp uh turkey gizzards Ew. cobblestone while i'm here let's get the cobblestone chill the mountain trappers hi guys you glance at the buck hiding safely behind a tree at the far side of the camp making a raven's call you signal for him to join you Buck picks his way through the frozen trappers. Are they gonna be okay? Ah, they might catch a case of the sniffles. Nothing a nice warm bowl of soup will fix. Come along now, we're still a ways away from the mountain peak. Think I know a way up. I'll meet you ahead. Come join me when you're ready. I'm ready now. The problem is, is I don't know where I'm going. Ah, I'm going the right way, I think. I think. Ooh. A mountain goat. I don't know the weakness of it. Little hopeful that I would find a rabbit up here, but all I've got is a goat. 
Hi. Be careful. Where you stands a looming rock face. Not even the most determined climber could hope to scale it. But you said you knew way up to the peak. Well, you see, this is the Great Geyser. When the air is cold enough, the water erupting from it freezes solid. Thought it might give us something to climb up. You look into the dry crater at the bottom of the sheer cliff. I don't see much erupting happening down there. Eh, uh, it's kind of been dormant for a few seasons now. I kind of hoped we'd get lucky. I don't trust any luck that I don't make myself. <laughs> Take a moment to ponder your situation and I the small geysers nearby, frequently spewing steam up into the frosty air. Suppose the other water spouts all draw from the same underground source. I think you're right. They started popping up shortly after the great geyser fell silent. And I wager if I plug them all up, we'll be able to make the big one blow its top again. Plug them? With what? Turn your attention to the bleeding mountain goats digging for lichen nearby. Those frosty beasts look to be about the right diameter. Maybe I can coax them out, some of them into position. Be careful. Lure the mountain goats. What do I need now? A goat perch. That's that's my last thing that I need to learn how to craft. Oh no, I need cobblestone. Magic paste and shiny lures. Oh. Oh, magic paste requires moo juice. I'm gonna need three of those at least. And dragonfly wings, so I have to go get dragonflies. And this requires just wicker work. Okay, I can make wicker work. I don't know if I can make enough. No, because I'm running low on sticks and reeds. So we have some things to go do there. I need one more rabbit. Let's switch our journal around. Um, got the avian lexicon. I've got all that stuff for the alchemist, so we'll, we'll track that one next. And we'll go looking for a rabbit. What do we got here? Spicy pepper. So these goats are not... I, I was afraid they would get angry at me and attack me. They aren't going to do that. That's a good thing. Alrighty, dude, we are back. Here you go, here's your stuff. Okay, alchemical alloy. Rumpling's eyes light up at the side of the alloy and he rubs his fingers together in anticipation. Crystal newt spine. Looks away from the newt spine, gesturing vaguely at the ground beside him. You lay it nearby. Golden egg. Pass the golden egg into the hands of the rumpling who receives it tentatively as if it could hatch at any moment. Collecting all the components into his arms, he disappears into his little treehouse. You can't really... you can't tell exactly what he's doing inside, but the sounds and smells emanating from the chimney make you think it's better left unknown. He emerges some time later with singed eyebrows and foggy glasses. Eureka, I've done it. He holds out a glowing emerald with a pair of tongs. Iron tongs, here. <laughs> Go ahead, it's yours. Take it. You praise the glittering jewel, it's abnormally heavy in your hands. Very pretty. Little man's giggling abruptly stops and his face falters with disbelief. Oh, hmm. What's the matter? You seem disappointed. Oh, it's nothing. It's just not what I was expecting at all. He strokes his beard thoughtfully. I guess I should have told you earlier, but there's a slight uh, curse to the stone. It can only be touched by one whose heart is free of avarice. How convenient for you to leave that part out. Since you went to all the trouble of tracking me down, I just assumed you were in it for the gold. Oh my, no. I don't care much for the wretched stuff. The gold is meant for someone else. Well, I gave you what you've asked for. Our deal is done. Now leave me in peace. Alright, alright. No need to be rude. I've got to bring this stone back to the millers. You're back! The hawk will return with his goons any minute now. Don't worry, I've got a solution to your monetary problems right here. You hold up the alchemist stone proudly. Oh, that's a very fine jewel, but I don't think it will be nearly enough to satisfy the hawk. Just stand back and watch. All this grain is just waiting to be spun into gold. Use the alchemist stone on the grain... Mills grain. Okay. Place the stone into a barrel of grain and it melts the kernels like butter. The barrels burst under the weight of glittering gold coins spilling out onto the floor. Wow, it's a miracle! You 
You touch the alchemist stone to a bushel of straw and it instantly transforms into a mound of sparkling riches. Amazing, I can't believe my eyes. Yeah, it is pretty awesome, right? You roll the alchemist stone into a bag of flour and mountains of gold dust rip through the canvas sack. How is this possible? I've never seen so much gold in my life. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Before the millers could so much as count a single coin, the door crashes open. Hawk strides into the mill, flanked by a pair of guards, cracking their knuckles. Time's up. Where's my money? Yeah, pay up, squirts. Master Hawk, not to worry. We've got your payment right here. His eyes open wide at the sight of piles of gold strewn about the mill. What? But how? Never you mind how, this should be more than enough to cover the cost of the mill's debts and the deed to the property. I don't understand unless... No, it can't be. He points a hooked talon at you accusingly. You, you're the rumpling. There's no other explanation. Guards, seize her. Two goons leap forward and grab you roughly by the arms. Making a terrible mistake. Just take your money and leave these good people in peace. Don't play smart with me, imp. I know how the legend goes. I've caught you, and now you must give me my weight in gold. Ha ha ha, I'm rich. I'll lock you up and squeeze you for every penny you've got. I'll be the wealthiest hawk in the entire kingdom. No, the entire world. Now, pay out my first installment, rumpling. He outstretches his hand towards you greedily. As you wish. I knew it. No sooner does a cold stone touch the hawk's skin than a brilliant flash of yellow light engulfs the mill. When the light fades, the hawk stands before you, transmuted into a solid gold statue. What magic is this? Horrified, the two soldiers beat a hasty retreat through the door. What happened? Is he okay? Tuck the stone, stone safely back into your satchel and give the, statu the hawk statue a pat. I think this should set you up nicely, just don't go spending it all in one place. Thank you. How could we ever make this up to you? Live a rich and full life. That ought to be enough for anyone. Notice a stray feather glinting on the floor. Aha! The soul of the hawk! <laughs> it makes a sound like coins falling into a wishing well. This is my payment. Aha! The hawk is done. Alright, let's go take care of the wolf, too. I'm running around, I'm grabbing stuff. Um, I don't have everything I need yet, but I can go do the wolf, because I have the owl lexicon. You wave your linguistic scroll at the owl, a magic quill at the ready. Well, speak up. Hoo hoo hoo. Quill scribbles across the parchment of its own accord, translating the owl's hoots into something more understandable. Walk warily, naive neighbor. Exploration seldom escapes notice. What the, does that even mean? I thought owls were supposed to be wise. So walk warily. Exploration seldom escapes notice. Squeeze through the gaps in the trees and direct under claw-like branches, but you've somehow managed to get right back where you started. You need to find a path through the trees. Are these the cardinal directions hidden in the owl's riddle? West, west, north, north, east, south, east, north. Ah, okay. West. West. North. North, East, South, East, North. That must be the wolf's cabin up ahead. He's expecting Lil Red to come a knocking, so I'll need to use the puppet to lure him to the huntsman's ambush.
You pop up the red hooded doll to the door of the wolf's rickety cabin, and evil light glows from within, casting eerie shadows on the ground. You lift the puppet's head to peep through the window, spotting chewed bones and torn rags littering the floor, but no sign of the wolf. Suddenly, yellow eyes stab out of the shadows. There you are, my delectable little pork chop. I was beginning to think you had forgotten about me. Through the strings of the puppet, a chill runs down your spine as your animal instincts can't help but scream one thing. Run. Preparing to hunt under the cover of darkness, the wolf pauses to stuff out a glimmering wisp. You'll need to use these wisps to your advantage if you're to hope to outrun the wolf. I, I don't understand what that meant. Use the puppet to lure the wolf to the huntsman. Wolf's claws close around the puppet as he opens his jaws wide to swallow it whole. Before he can snatch up the doll in his teeth, you yank its invisible strings, pulling the puppet out of his grasp and back to your hiding spot. So I have to use the wisps to... Oh, there's one to the left. I should have been running far sooner than I started. God damn it. Okay, I got this. Oh boy. We're doing it, but who? I was gonna say, did he give up the chase? At your command, the pup comes to a halt in the center of the moonlight clearing. The wolf bursts out of the shadow, gripped by ferocious rage. There's no place left to hide, little piggy. You're mine now, all mine. Bearing his fangs, the wolf pounces into the air with tremendous force. The sound of thunder loudly from across the clearing, crows scatter into the night air, and the dark wood falls silent. Blinking in disbelief, the wolf staggers to a stop. He glances down his chest where a crimson spot blossom on, out onto his vest. Huntsman reveals himself from the bushes, holding a smoking weapon anxiously. You shot me! Beast crashes to the ground, exhaling his final breath, his glassy eyes transfixed on the full moon high above. Hesitantly, Hummer, Huntsman boggles at the wolf before a triumphant grin crosses his face. I did it. I actually did it. I defeated the wolf. Don't forget that you had some help, kid. This villain won't haunt you any longer, and that's what haunt any longer, and that's what really matters. As the Huntsman strikes a courageous pose atop his trophy, something pearly white falls from the wolf's mouth. A tooth. The soul of the wolf. You can hear the whimpering of a dog. He's just gonna stay here forever posing now. Alright, so I need a seashell. For sure. Because I need the puzzle box. And that requires a seashell. Well, that took a little bit of work. I had to make a pickpocket so I could pickpocket the fish people at the uh, uh, the dock area. But we've got our puzzle box. Gnome go boom. Now we can make this, the lucky strop, which allows me to make the magic sharp XL. And then I will need some magic paste and a bunch of cobblestones. I used up my cobblestones to make that, but I think I'm going to need three of these. We'll see. If I need more, I'm gonna need more moo juice. In we go. Hello, piggy. Here you go. Sal slowly grinds the blade of her cleaver across the new wet zone, sending flecks of rust flying. Flecks of hair from her own chin and tests the keenness of the edge by splitting it in half. Oh, not bad at all. Go on, take this old stone and throw it in the trash bin. Don't mind if I do. Now that thing's getting fat. Okay, Big Pig's wet stone. You toss the old brick into the effigy's ravenous maw and it cracks to dust within moments. 
Its filing peel of bricks, the pork simulacrum swells to monstrous proportions. Rattling laugh chills your blood as the old man's spirit looks upon your work. What a proper beggar's feast this is. I thank you for the kind gesture, but I still don't see how this will bring justice to those wretched swine. Just you wait. I have to fire up the barbecue first. Craft. Oh, I need to craft a cinder. I've got it. Thank goodness. Striking a spark into the spit, you see the set the tinder alight. You take a step back, watching the orange flames leap high into the air. The porcine effigy blackens as you tend to the fire and fuss over the coals. A succulent aroma begins to waft on the wind. The old man licks his translucent lips hungrily. I swear I can almost smell a delicious roast. Ah, if only it were real. Over the sound of crackling logs, you hear the crowd of footsteps come padding down towards the road towards the cooking pit. Over here, I knew I smelled something good. It's the others, my friends, you've come back. Ah, ghost! No, wait. Is that old man McGraw? Say it ain't so, old timer. When you never showed up for the morning head count, we all feared the worst. It's true, I ended up as pig food. Can you believe that? Worried you all would face the same fate as me. How, however, did you escape the hog farm? It's the strangest thing. The swine sisters started complaining about the weather being too hot, even though it's pretty chilly if you ask me. All of a sudden, they bolted out into the woods, squealing all the way. Left the gate wide open and everything. Then we smelled something delightful in the breeze and couldn't resist. It's been so long since we've had anything other than pig slop. Gosh, that smells good. Is it barbecue? Where'd you get all that food? <laughs> Place of the bricks, sticks, and straw, the pork and porcine effigy has split into a mountain of delectable sizzling meats. Oh man, I'm getting hungry. Ham, sausage, bacon, it all looks so delicious. What a wonder. It truly is a feast. Thank you. What did I tell you? Enjoy yourself for a little while longer. Be at peace. Starving crowd happily helps themselves to the feast, cheering, laughing, and praising the old ghost name. See something twinkling amongst the co cooking coals of the co cooling coals of the cooking pit. Warm to the touch, you pick out a piece of greasy gristle from the suit. In closer inspection, it appears to be three separate chunks: one fat piece, one long piece, and one small piece. The souls of the pigs. Ha! <laughs> We've got one more. So, I need to go get some cobblestone. Yes, I need three of those. And the cobblestone, I, I need a lot. So I'm gonna be a while. Oh, I did it. Three. That was a lot of cobblestone. It took eight per, so that was 24 cobblestone. Holy cow, but I got my goat lures. So, back to the mountain. I'm gonna go help the stag. He's the last, the buck is the last soul we've got. So we are definitely going to finish this up. Lure the goats. I don't see that it's luring them. I might have to pick these up and use them to coax the goats up this direction. Like, hey, you goat. Look at this. And then pick it up and then put it up here. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the plump bodies of the brain goats clogging up all the small geysers. The earth beneath your feet begins to grumble. The mountain goats' eyes go wide as the pressure builds beneath them. With no other outlet, the steam rushes towards the only opening left. The deafening boom, the long dormant geyser erupts, sending a great spear of water high into the air. As the deluge reaches its apex, ice crystals begin to form in the mist, twinkling as they hang in the air. Bit by bit, they begin to build on each other, forming larger and larger crystals until it forms a great column of ice rising all the way up towards the mountain peak. Ah, I can't believe it worked! Last one to the top is a spotted fawn. Alright, to the peak! Now what we got? Stand at the mountain's peak, buffeted by wind and snow. Now then, where's this crystal cave you spoke of? I'm not sure. I think it should be just up ahead, but in this blizzard, I can hardly see my own nose. 
Buck jumps behind you, pointing into the frigid fog. Wait, what was that? Squint into the galing winds, unable to see anything but white. Probably just another mountain goat. Wouldn't be so sure. When I was little, my brother told me stories of the snowkin who lived up here. He said that if I ever went up the mountain, the snowkin would blow a great blizzard down on me. He said they'd turn me around and give me false directions until I got lost and froze solid. Sounds to me like these snowkin might be some kind of guardian spirits. If they're aiming to keep people away from something, then they'll surely know where that something is. I have a notion to find our way as they do, but it will take a considerable quantity of their essence. Sounds dangerous. I'll just stay put then. I know better than to wander blind in a snowstorm. Okay. So, what are we talking about when we say snowkin? Is it those guys? Collect the snowkin hearts. Um, ah, there's a snowkin. I need a melting pot. I need three of them. Oh, I'm gonna need to kill me a cardinal and make three cinder boxes. Let's hope I have enough for that. I do not. I'm gonna go need to get some fireflies. All right, let's go back to the buck. We'll talk to him and see what we can do. Look, see how the snow swirls in strange directions? Maybe the snow can know the path. You pile the mystical snow at the buck's feet and shield it from the howling winds. The flakes drift in the air like icy glitter. Oh, come on then, I'm getting chilly. Rod the snow drift with a muttered invocation. Despite the chaotic storm, the snow crystals swirl into an icy ribbon and slowly trace a line up the mountain peak. There it goes, that must be the way to the crystal cave. Takes off after the trail like a shot. You hike up your skirt and do your best to keep up in the dense snow. Shall we? Yeah. His face falls as you arrive at another sheer cliff. I don't understand. The snow stops here, but there isn't anything more than rocks. Did the snow can mislead us? Are we lost? I don't want to freeze solid. This is no dead end. Look. You gestured to the cliff where the eddies of swirling snow gathered together. In moments, the entire wall of rock is buried under fresh white powder. Reach out a clawed finger and touch the pure snow. It melts away to reveal a glittering opening in the stone. Crystal Cave, you did it! Let's go in before we freeze to death. I'm certain the crystal flower must be inside. Yeah, me too. And I just need to snip it. Oh dear, look at all these flowers. I didn't think there'd be so many. I'm going to pick a whole bouquet. You stop the impetus, impetuous youth with a quick tug and mutter under your, beneath your breath. Hold on. Prophecy mentioned the one true crystal flower. The other flowers must be a deception meant to trap foolhardy would-be kings. Prophecy? What are you talking about? Uh, I only mean to say that we should find the best single flower for your brother's coronation. Hmm, good point. Quality over quantity. Ah, I think I see just the one right over there. Yep. It's this one. It's perfect. Just look at the refraction of the petals and the frosting on the leaves. Oh, but I seem to have forgotten my pruning shears back at the castle. Would you do the honors? I don't want to damage it. Of course. You snip the brittle stem of the flower, careful not to touch it directly. Prophecies can be nasty stuff to stick your fingers in. Buck holds the flower aloft, inhaling the blossom's magical aura. Wow. Smells just like powdered snow on fresh pine trees. The moment is interrupted by the shrill cries of aristocrats clamoring against each other. I found them! Over here, my lord! Oh, good! Excellent timing! A rush of colorful fabrics and fancy hats, you find yourself surrounded by nobles. The stag steps out from their mist, looking irate. After everything I've done for you, this is how you repay me, brother? The young prince blinks in confusion. What are you doing here? Have I offended you somehow? Usurper, you thought you could slip off when I wasn't looking and steal the crown from me. You think I don't know about the prophecy of the crystal flower? Why does everyone keep talking about a prophecy? I picked this flower as a gift for you, brother. Fool, only the king can choose the true crystal flower, and you are not the king. Stag reaches down his feet and plucks the closest flower. See, only I can. Good thing we didn't touch it. Stag never finishes the sentence, his defiant pose forever imprisoned inside solid ice. 
Oh, my brother, what have you done? You give the buck. Mystify Buck, a reassuring pat on the back as the nobles gather closer. The true king has been revealed indeed. King? You mean me? You are the prince after all. I suppose that prophecy was pretty clear. Magic flowers are seldom wrong about this sort of thing. <laughs> and if you tend to your kingdom with the same care you tend to your garden, you'll do just fine. The ring of nobles crowd around the buck. You know, I never cared much for the stag myself. I think the new ruler will shake things up a bit. You excuse yourself as they bow and praise the confused lad. Long live the king! Passing the frozen stag, your eye catches something on sticking out of the permafrost. You reach down and pick out a shard of translucent ice, careful not to cut yourself on the sharp edges. Despite the warmth of your palm, it does not melt. The soul of the stag. We have all four! Souls of the stag, hawk, hogs, and wolf rattle inside your pack like angry insects. It's so the last of these villains, now it's time to put an end to this wretched business with the goat. Yes! It'd be nice if instead of returning me to the mountain, it returned me home. But! Oh well. Oh, it did return me to the warp point though, that's good. Back to our mausoleum. It's probably going to be just salivating thinking about this. Hello, demon goat. I have done thy bidding, master. Alrighty. Goat paws the floor with a cloven hoof. You've returned. I was beginning to grow impatient. I would have thought patience to be one of your strong suits, but don't fret. I've brought you the last of your souls. Delicious, are they not? You know what to do. The golden feather. Shimmering sensations of the hawk wash over you. The nib of a quill scratching on parchment. Coins clinking. Hey, I earned the tra platinum trophy. Sharp snap of a closing padlock. Your eyes water at the smell of the hogs, grunting swine and buzzing flies. A cleaver falls onto a wooden block. Blood, bone, meat. Chill runs through your fingers as the stag sockets into the wall. Condescending laughter, schemes in the snow, pride, arrogance, hubris. Your mind sinks into a shadow in the presence of the wolf. Soft footfalls padding through dried leaves. Hot breath, big eyes, sharp teeth. There you go! Collected souls vibrate with incandescent intensity. They seem to melt into their recesses, boiling away into tiny pinpricks of starlight. Soon nothing remains except twelve smoldering scorch marks on the stone wall. Ah, well done. That's that. Our contract is fulfilled. It was a pleasure doing business with you. Hang on. About your end of the deal. You said you would return my memories to me. Did I? Well, perhaps I misspoke. You never really had any to begin with, my dear. What are you talking about? I just don't remember them. I woke up and... and met me? Yes, that sounds right, about right for your very first memory. What? But you told me that I brought this sleeping maiden to you, that I asked you to save her soul. Oh, what I meant is that she came to me. She asked me to save her own soul, but it's so very easy to get confused. You, her, really, what's the difference? Drawing realization creeps over you like ice water. Dawning. Her life was cut short, whether by the wolf flangs or the hog's cleaver or under the weight of a dozen other wrongs, I do not know. But in desperation, she called out to me, She struck, so we struck a deal. I would save her soul in exchange for theirs, one for twelve. It's not like I could let her go and collect them herself. She needed to stay here, you see, as insurance. So then you created me? Is that it? To collect those souls on her behalf? Well, I should say that she created you. She snipped off a piece of herself to do it. It was all worked out in the contract, of course. And now that contract is fulfilled. Panned out nicely for everyone, I'd say. So, if you, by which I mean she, ever need to get out of another bind, don't hesitate to give me a shout. Ta-ta for now. The room fills with a flash of blinding light. You blink and the goat is gone, leaving only a goat-shaped hole in the world. Slowly, you turn to face the sleeping maiden. You feel sluggish and heavy. Take strain and step towards the gilded coffin. Your legs snap like dry twigs and you crumple to the floor. The cauldron is the last to fall. It resounds with a hollow clang as it bounces off the ground.
You slowly open your eyes, see the vaulted ceiling of the hall. Raise your hand to touch the clear crystal surface of the gilded casket. Glass lid opens effortlessly and you swing your legs to sit up. The marble floor is smooth and cold under your bare feet. Stoop down to pick up the familiar metal cauldron. Slowly, memories come back at its touch. Who was it? Who was it that got me? Thank you for playing Witchwood. It was a pleasure. Wow, we aren't going... Oh, gosh, I hope we figure out who it was at the end. So basically, this was kind of like... It reminds me of the Monkey King movies, where he could snip off a piece of his hair, make a... Like a puppet that he could use to go about. That's kind of what I was. The whole witch was just a puppet of the maiden that her and the goat created. Oh wow, that was it. That was very short credits. Well, that was Witchwood. It was awesome. I kind of would have liked some more story resolution. Like, was the maiden actually a witch in the swamp? Was that just all part of the, the puppet that she created? I don't know. Anyway, it was awesome. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you can see whenever I post anything new. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Catch you all in the next one. Bye!